here, so just to make this, uh, just to make this clear. Uh, I did start speaking in uh, English at, at conferences like six years ago. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how to, build an, uh, how to build an online business. I would like to know how many of you already own a business. Okay, how many of you own an online business? Okay, and uh, from, from, the, from the others, how many of you ever thought about starting an uh, online business? <laughs> <laughs> so most, most of you. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, if this works... Oh, oh. And uh, I had a real pain point at that point in time. 
that main point was that I needed a way to be able to analyze my competitors in order to understand better their marketing strategies. And uh, I had two routes in my mind. Route number one was to build a software that would be able to do that analysis for me and continue to do my work as I was doing until at that point in time. Or route number two, which was exactly as route number one, but with a different mindset, build the same software, but uh, build it in a way that I would be able to sell it to other people and not only keep it, keep it to myself. And then that's how Cognitive SEO was born uh, back in 2000, uh, 2010. Fast forward one year from, uh, from that, in June uh, 2011, I was at a conference in uh, Poland, uh, which was about uh, digital marketing, uh, and there I had my first uh, ever presentation in English, and I gave the presentation to over 200 people and it was really, really bad. <laughs> but uh, in the end, uh, the scope of the presentation was to present uh, Cognitive SEO. It was the first, uh, the first time I was talking about Cognitive SEO in, uh, in public and uh, announcing it to the public. Uh, the scope of this was to get as much feedback as, as possible from uh, from uh, my potential audience for, for, that, uh, for that product. And uh, I reached this goal. I had a lot of feedback and leads from, uh, from, the, from the conference. At the same time, in June uh, 2011, I, we also launched the blog of Cognitive SEO and we started writing uh, content on the blog that would, we thought would resonate with, uh, with uh, our, uh, our audience. We didn't have the product already, and this was the page that we had at that uh, point in time. The only action that you could take there was to leave your email address in order to get notified when we will launch the commercial, the commercial product. In a couple of months, in December 2011, we launched the product and we had a list of 700 uh, email addresses on file which were pretty targeted because only people that came to the site and entered their email address uh, got into this, uh, into this list. Uh, and uh, it was a pretty intense day. The first, the first day uh, when we launched the Cognitive SEO, we got 50 customers in the first day. Not actual customers that paid money, but customers that validated their credit card in order to get a free 14-day trial, which meant they took the credit card out of their pocket and entered it in order to see a new product that they uh, were announced about. <coughs> what do you think happened in the next, uh, in the next month or so? Was it good? Was it bad? I can tell you that we lost 80% of our, of our customers in the first month because our software was full of bugs, uh, it wasn't working as, as expected, uh, we didn't target the, uh, the uh, real uh, audience of our, of our platform, we, had a pretty, we have a pretty in-depth advanced platform and uh, you need to have a medium, a minimum, medium knowledge of search engine optimization in order to understand the value of this product. And uh, by February 2012, we uh, made a very important change on the site. And the change that we did on the site was the change in pricing. We started with a pricing that was from uh, $19 per month, $49.99, $149, and $249 per month, which meant we didn't know exactly what kind of customers we will get. So we started very cheap and we went uh, at a medium uh, level of uh, price for this, for this niche. What we did was we increased the pricing. And we increased the pricing that is starting at $99 per month up to $499 per month. And uh, uh, what, we, what made us do this was that we got a lot of uh, the cheapest customers that we had gave us the most support tickets 
and had the highest expectations for the least money they, they were paying. And you will see this in almost every market. We weren't interested in this kind of clients because they couldn't even understand the value of their product. They wanted to, for $19, $19 they wanted for us, for example, to analyze sites like google.com or stuff like this, which was impossible, either, neither for, uh, for uh, $1,000 per, 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 per month. So, uh, this was a great thing that we did in the beginning and uh, the result was that we increased our sales and uh, that we also increased the satisfaction level because we got, got uh, uh, we cut away the noise from the, from the product which wasn't really, really productive. And uh, fast forward uh, four years from uh, Five years from, from, uh, from that point in time, in 2015, we, got, uh, we entered into the, the LUT top for the technology Fast 50 Powerful Connections. This is how they call it. We were on the 27th uh, place with uh, the company that uh, runs Comptivation. Um, and the question now is how did we do it? Did we build a product that marketed itself? Did we build a product that went viral, viral in the beginning? I was dreaming about it and this is what I imagined when I started doing it, but it didn't happen. And it was very, very hard in the beginning. Uh, we started from zero, no one knew us, so we were at the bottom of the food chain. And uh, what we did, we started outreaching to influencers in the search engine optimization and the digital marketing niche. Our aim was to convince them to review our platform, check it if it's good, and if they like it, write a review about it on their, their blogs and uh, uh, talk about us on social, uh, social uh, media. And uh, some, of them, uh, some of them did. And, uh, Step by step, we uh, started to get uh, started to get traction. But this is where in the in the in the initial phases. Then we needed to scale things up with the marketing strategies, and uh, we did uh, uh, Google advertising, Twitter advertising, Facebook advertising. Um, we did remarketing. Uh, we did a lot of content marketing and I will focus more on the content marketing part which practically means that you write and produce content either in a written or a video format uh, that you uh, uh, put on your blog or on other, on or on or other sites and the intent to do, uh, for content marketing is to create awareness for your brand to create uh, uh, authority for, for yourself uh, and credibility for your brand. And uh, in the beginning we struggled and we did it wrong for a couple of years to be honest. And uh, we did it wrong because we didn't get the engagement we wanted on the blog post that we were writing. People were not commenting on, uh, on the blog posts, people were not sharing our blog posts and we couldn't understand why but we kept writing about various subjects in the uh, digital marketing space and at, at the point in time by doing failing and retrying and failing and retrying and all this stuff uh, we got some blog posts that were pretty in-depth case studies that got a lot of traction and uh, people started talking more and more uh, about it, the engagement rate on that uh, increased and we, I, we learned at that point in time that our product is an in-depth product and our audience wants to hear in-depth stories, research stories about uh, what is happening in the digital marketing space and from that point in time we changed completely the way we wrote blog posts and uh, we now focus on research type of content, case studies, uh, in-depth analysis of various things on, uh, uh, in the social optimization and digital marketing, uh, digital marketing space. And uh, this is the way 
We did it, and this is a methodology that can be applied to any online business. The single thing that is very important when you're doing uh, content marketing and you, for example, need to write it yourself, you need to be very passionate about the subject. Because if you're not passionate, you can't really fake it. It's pretty hard. It really depends on the niche that you're in. But being passionate about something that you're doing, not only content marketing, but I was really passionate about this product that I did in the beginning and lots of people told me that I was not able to, I would not be able to do it. I uh, did a lot of fails, and a lot of retries, but in the end I, I did it. Maybe I could do it better, I don't know, but I did it until this, uh, until this point. And passion about the subject is something that makes you do things better. If passion was not there, the product was Mm, not that, uh, not that good. And uh, what what I can tell you is that most of uh, most of the people have this impression that they have an idea, and if they have an idea, it's a very good idea, and they will keep it to themselves, a very secret idea. They will not share it with anyone because it's their idea. Ideas are useless. They mean nothing. Everyone. If you don't implement them, they represent nothing. The difference between an idea and an implementing the idea, it's the, the actual thing that gets out there. And execution is everything, as the screen uh, said. So if you think you have an idea, if you research the space where your idea would fit in, if you your idea solves a real problem and if the problem that you solve has a multitude of people, many people that can uh, benefit from that, uh, from that, uh, from that uh, solution, then go do it. Don't think, overthink too much. Thank you.